I originally learned about Dr. Amen because uh, my business partners uh, told me about this guy who works on helping people change their brains, fix their brains. And I had some challenges, uh, some uh, assaults when I was much younger. What a lot of people don't know is your brain is soft, mm -hmm. about the consistency of soft butter. And it's housed in a really hard skull that has multiple sharp bony ridges. Mm -hmm. And so any sort of head trauma, any sort of assault worries me yeah. on the mm -hmm. impact that can cause. So walk me through, uh, let's start with physical trauma. Well, the first incident was I was, three grown men tried to take my life when I was 17 and a half years old because of the color of my skin. When I was 17, I loved motorcycles. I had this old Harley Davidson and uh, it was a 1937, so it was always breaking down. And I was driving uh, up to Bakersfield, California to see my father and the chain came off the motorcycle. So I pulled into a gas station off the freeway, was fixing it and a uh, pickup truck showed up. Three men got out and proceeded to tell me that uh, uh, I picked the wrong place to get broken down and uh, they assaulted me. And the last thing I remember, I do remember uh, getting punched and getting hit in the face several times, but the last thing I remember was uh, um, I don't know what he hit me with, but that's what that's what I saw. I saw it the last thing, and I, I woke up the next morning, uh, and I was in the back of a police car. Learning more about it, I thought that if if something is broken, it can be fixed, and uh, I was super interested in finding out what it was first. It drove me to seek answers to find out what could be done about it. To be honest with you, when I first went in, I was jokingly expecting him to go, how are you still walking? How are you still standing up straight? You know, how are you still functioning as a human being with a brain like this? I jokingly say that, but you know, inside I kind of knew that there was something going on, but I was so thrilled. He said, I have a 35 year old brain uh, and it's very healthy and it looks good. And uh, I, but there are some areas that are definitely uh, a result of the trauma that I had. When we look at your skin, you have a really good cerebellum. But your emotional brain, it's on fire. With some anxiety, this is your basal ganglia, and people have been traumatized. It fires that part of the brain and then you just begin to look. Mm -hmm. Calm it down, that'd be helpful. This doesn't surprise me. My guess is that you're highly effective and you can work really hard for a long time. Your brain is not your age. Your brain, besides the hurt part, is like 35. Your frontal lobes are awesome. You've done a good job of taking care of your brain, but your temporal lobes are hurt. These guys should look like these guys. I'm the kind of person that if you tell me to do something, uh, I'm gonna do it. Knowing that I can do something to make those changes, I'm s unbelievably excited about it. So what's next for me is to do the protocol, religiously, as prescribed, um, and then keep checking in to see the progress. And I can't wait to feel uh, the results as well. I didn't know uh, that my level of anxiety was high. I had no idea. I mean, I, I'm a pretty happy guy. I love my life. I love the way that I go through, but it's clear on the brain scan there that that is uh, an area of my life that can improve. This is so surreal looking at my own brain. Isn't that cool? Wow. See, now what I want you to develop is something I call brain envy. <laughs> the question I always have is, well, how much better can I make it? Why is brain health so important? Because the brain is the command center for the entire body, for our entire lives. The happier, the better the brain, the more, the better functioning the brain is, the better you're going to feel about yourself, about other people, about the world around you, and the more you're going to be able to do the things that are necessary to get you that life that you desire. I'm all about, let's go towards the pain and deal with it now. You ready to go? Let's go. Um, skills. Yeah. Not just pills. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Ooh, did you say skills, not just pills? Hit it. That is beautiful.
Yeah. Psychiatrists are the only medical doctors who never look at the organ. They yeah. treat. I, you and know what? they make diagnoses based on symptom clusters with no biological data, mm -hmm. like they did in 1840 when Lincoln yeah. was depressed. Right. This is wrong. Yeah. Especially now, you know, when I see this and I go, when I first learned about you, it was that, that kind of thing. Because I remembered when I was a kid, I'd take apart everything, clocks and cameras and everything. And I thought, well, here's what this guy says is true. You know, what you just said is so true. How, how can you how can you work on something that you can't see? If, if I have appendicitis, they're going to cut me open and take a look. If I got, you know, a heart problem, they're going to cut me open. But, you know, they don't take they don't cut the brain open and take a look at it. And you figured a way to, <laughs> how to get in there and, and look around. I believe to my core, to my brain right now, that um, dealing with that core issue, whatever it is with every, everybody's different, dealing with that is going to change our lives measurably. And I can't wait to see what that's gonna be for myself and what I get to bring to other people as well.